some people, they just never learn. I've said time and time again that under absolutely no circumstances should you ever apologize to an SJW. It will not work out in your favor. And we've seen countless real-world examples of this play themselves out now over the last few years to help highlight that very point. It does not matter how genuine the apology is. It does not matter how actually remorseful you may be. They will continue to be offended. But like a shark smelling blood in the water, once they see that little bit of weakness, once they see you subjugate and sublimate yourself, they're going to go in for the kill. They are going to latch on with their fucking teeth. And they're going to yank and rip until they pull a limb off because that is the nature of the beast. Snowflakes can never be satisfied, and trying to do so is folly. You will only open yourself up for even more trouble than you may have been in before. And what do you know, the perfect example of this just recently happened. It happened in the last few days, and I wanted to show it to you. I wanted to share it with the people watching so they can get a really good idea of why you should never try to appease these sorts of people. Now, a few days ago, a video was uploaded, and I'll have a link to it in the description if you want to go check it out. It's a fairly short video, about three, three and a half minutes long, entitled, One of the Many Faces of Racism in America. And the video centers around a protest that's going on, and it gets interrupted by an individual who comes in and he says very hurtful, mean things. He says the no-no, naughty, racist words that nobody wants to hear in America anymore. Now, the the video itself is fairly benign. There's there's not a lot to it. He comes in, he says some things, and then he leaves. There's no violence, there's no physical fighting, no pushing and shoving. It's pretty clear cut. He says some stuff they don't like, and that's the end of it. That really is what the video is. But the internet being what it was, once it saw the video, decided we're going to find out who he is, what his name is, where he lives, where he works, and you can imagine uh, what they did with that information. That's right, they tracked down the company he works for. Now, the apology I'm talking about isn't from the man himself. As far as I know, he hasn't apologized. It's from the company that he works for. Today, we were disgusted to learn that one of MMC's former employees used racial slurs. This chimp right here. And made racially charged comments. Hello. During a peaceful protest in Mars, Pennsylvania, outside of work hours and at a location with which we have no affiliation. We are sorry that this incident occurred. Whether at work or not, we do not condone hate speech. A nigger right here with a fucking mop on his head. Ever. Inclusion and diversity are among MMC's core values. We believe in equality for everyone, regardless of race, age, gender identity, ethnicity, religion, or sexual orientation. MMC has terminated his employee and will never do business with him again in the future. Well, huzzah. The offended people of the internet should be happy. I mean, after all, they found out who this man was, they found out where he worked, and they alerted the company. And within hours, and I do mean within hours, the company not only fired him, but put up this public statement saying, he does not reflect our core value. So that should be the end of the story, right? I mean, everybody should be satisfied. They got exactly what they wanted. This company has done exactly what the people who were upset by that video could have wanted. Of course not. This is where the snowflake mentality really kicks into high gear, because you're going to see in the reaction to this post exactly what I'm talking about when I say you should never apologize to these people. Now, the company didn't do anything wrong. The company didn't go out and make these statements. The company didn't offend people on the internet. This is just a guy that works for them. So let's see what the reaction they got was. I'm sure it's completely fucking reasonable. Lori Miller writes, Although I am glad that this man was dismissed and was stunned by the content of the video, I have to question, with the boldness and ignorance so readily spewed upon innocent protesters, was there really no previous indicators of racism? And if there were, would coworkers be pleased, be fearless, and come forth and reveal some practices of management that turned a deaf ear? This is 2016, and the content I heard is indicative of violence of a previous era. Come on, it is the current year. Clearly, there has to be more to this story. I mean, obviously, this man said something off of work hours and at a location not associated with work, but for some reason, the workplace must know more than they're letting on. Let's, let's see if Lori Miller can dig to the bottom of that. Let's see what uh, our little detective can find. She continues, I would like to know exactly what MMC land management policy entailed as far as diversity considering this debacle that has occurred. If this individual can repeatedly make ape-like sounds towards protesters, it makes me think that perhaps he never had an opportunity to work alongside an individual of color or a disability. You hear that, MMC? You obviously don't have a diverse enough workforce to have allowed such a racist to exist. And the only cure for this is to implement a quota. We need more black people in MMC land management. And apparently we need more disabled people too. Because according to Lori Miller, people of color and the disabled are pretty much the same.
Of course, Lori wasn't alone. There were quite a few people that had some interesting things to share. Like Mary Lou Boyle, for example. This man should be investigated by the authorities for mental illness. Surely, this has to be a claim for his behavior to save face and gain decent employment in the future. With that being said, all his guns and right to carry should be suspended. The last thing we need is someone recently fired for their beliefs who also has a cache of hunting weapons at his disposal. As far as I'm concerned, he needs to, at minimum, have his right to carry and own question. I think if you say the word nigger, you shouldn't be allowed to hunt anymore. There's a connection between those two things. Well, what a remarkably reasonable reaction, Mary Lou. Oh, you have more to say. His actions on video would make me question his frame of mind. If you worked at his former company, would you want to have him having guns? Ever hear the term going postal? Yeah. I would call the authorities and have it put on record. I certainly wouldn't want to be anywhere near him when he snaps. Hello, 911? I'd like to report a crime. There's a man ooking at black people. Yes, yes. If you could send at least five squad cars, I think he might have weapons. Yes, I, I, I'm certain. He is ooking in the first degree. Please, for the love of God, get SWAT down here. She finishes up with, Actually, when someone reports him for suspicious behavior, it is mandatory they do a well check. And if I were the issuing authority for that right to carry license and saw that video, I would have explaining to do if I didn't do my due diligence and investigate. So let's sum up what uh, Mary Lou is saying here. A man goes to a protest outside of work hours, not on the clock, not with the company, just a guy going to a protest, walks up to a few people, says the word nigger, and ooks. Now, in her world, ooking at somebody must mean that you are about to plan out a methodical attack. You are going to go postal and fucking murder everybody. And so she doesn't just want to have his rights revoked to own or carry a weapon. She wants the authorities involved. Because it's not good enough that he just got fired. We need to take his weapons, too. Maybe Mary Lou would advocate, you know, taking back his assault home. And I hear he might have an assault car, too. Let's, uh, let's get him and his family into the gutter. That's the safest place they can be. And I think Mary Lou has the right idea. Let's just, let's strip all ownership rights from him for daring to ook at a black person. Sarah Warner writes, This employee doesn't appear to have much of an internal censor for his racist comments. I find it impossible to believe you are entirely unaware of his bigotry prior to this incident. I suggest a review of his immediate supervisor and evaluations of his coworkers, both as potential conspirators and victims. I think I might have just had a stroke. I need, to, I need to read that again to make sure I really heard what I think I just did. I suggest a review of his immediate supervisor and evaluation of his coworkers, both as potential conspirators and victims. Tell me, have you ever been affiliated with the Communist Party? Do you have any communist sympathizers working at your company? We found a communist saying communist things. We think your company's hiding something. How many conspirators are there? I think Sarah Warner might be an ex-Scientologist. This sounds a lot like something they would say. Are you an SP? Are you, a, are you a filthy, suppressive person? Who are you working with? What are your crimes? Of course, she goes on to explain her completely reasonable stance. Lynette, if the company is serious about not employing races, then they may have to terminate more than just this employee. After all, this guy's not a quiet racist. He's obnoxious, and I'd report him if he were my coworker. Ask yourself, what kind of person would let his work behavior slide? Well, this is a reasonable response. We just need to fire more employees and hold an investigation to see who he was working with when he went to make a statement on his own outside of work. I think that's completely reasonable. I mean, really, when you think about it, I'm sure that at MMC Land Management, the uh, different gardeners and lawn care specialists, they get together. They get together when the boss isn't looking, you know, in hidden broom closets and on the basement floor, and they plan out logistical support to send one of them out to ook at people. That's a, that's a completely reasonable day-to-day -day thing to have happen at work. I, I can imagine just around the water cooler them going over their tactical assault ooking plans and deciding uh, what group of people they're going to go out and offend. Harry Robert writes, By the way, John Pizzone, we are watching you. And I think employment possibilities for you are quite limited now. As my ninth grade reacher... A great you've never accomplished. We cannot hold you responsible for what you think, but when you say it, we will hold you responsible. And to say this in 2015, in front of a camera provides just how stupid you are. It is the current year right now. Don't you understand, John Pisone, that Harry Roberts is a reacher? He reaches people. That's his job. He reaches the children. He reaches them reading and writing and arithmetic because that's what a reacher does. That's right, there's a dedicated group of reachers that exist within society. And if you step out of line, they're going to reach out and fuck with you. Andy Mawson writes, 
praise for MMC Land Management for firing this scumbag, but it strains credulity. Pulling out those $10 words, aren't you, Andy? It strains credulity to believe he is the only employee with this outlook if we are to believe no one there knew he has this problem. Especially as he clearly has no filter as his public postings from his Facebook profile shows, which unfortunately can't be shared here. If MMC Land Management do not have a policy of reviewing social media before hiring, they better get one together tomorrow. Well, I think Andy's being just reasonable. Companies should monitor all their employees outside of work and on all the social media they may use. You can't have freedom in this day and age. That's ridiculous. We need the corporation to make sure you don't step out of line because it may be problematic. Nancy Godfrey writes, While I appreciate MMC's willingness to take action in the face of an ex-employee's disturbing recorded comments, I have to wonder if MMC's statement about the incident reveals a deeper problem. It's all well and good to put nice-sounding collections of words out there, but unless those words are truly meant in the tangible form of color, gender, and orientation-blind hiring and promotion within the company, then it's only lip service. I find it odd that the ex-employee states only having ever seen 10 people of color in his life. Aren't there any working for MMC? things that make you go, hmm? That's right, MMC. You haven't done a good enough job. Reading these comments makes it clear. You need to have at least, at least, 10 transsexual disabled midgets working as gardeners at your company. And if you don't, then we know that you're part of the problem. You're part of the conspiracy. You're facilitating ooking in the first degree. I don't know what you're trying to hide, MMC. I've looked at your picture. They're right. All white guys, look at that. All those shitlords. I don't see any transsexual black midgets who are disabled in that picture. I only see privileged shitlords. Now, the reaction to this hasn't just been confined to Facebook. It's not just MMC Land Management's post. This video went viral. It showed up in different news articles. It showed up on different community websites, different social media platforms. And if you were to believe that perhaps this is a little too close to Poe's Law, that these must be people that are just trolling, there's no way people could really think this and say this and want these sorts of things, I'd like you to take two facts into consideration. The first being, look at the amount of thumbs up each of those comments got. And then go look at the post yourself and compare it to other people who are saying more reasonable things. And you will quickly see that there is a lot of support for that kind of notion. The idea that we need to investigate the company. We need to look at all the other employees. We need a racial quota and a new hiring policy. Again, this company gave them what they wanted, but it wasn't good enough. The other point I would like you to consider is the one I'm going to show you right now. Now, there's a, uh, a YouTube channel out there, Advice Show TV. He's talked about this incident. He did two videos and he also uh, put a few social media posts up. I want to read one of them to you. And he outright identifies who's involved and getting this resolved. Now, this is from his Instagram account. The social justice warriors got the racist from the viral video fired from his job at MMC Land Management. Everyone sent them the video and they quickly took a stand against racism. Social media have power when used for good. I bet this racist will learn not to call black people chimp and the N-word anymore. Advice show media. Now, here's an individual who has a large subscriber base who's been following this and done videos on it, and he's outright stating, SJWs are the people responsible for getting this guy fired. Now, maybe you're thinking, oh, well, he's a reasonable individual. Maybe he's just upset. Maybe he thinks that uh, this person should be fired because he said something racist and that affects the company, and that's really all there is to it. I'd like you to listen to his stance, and this is from his second video on the subject. Just, just take a listen to what he says. Any of the people who like to think like that man, make sure you think before you start calling people names and even online because when you do it online and a person really want to get at you they can find you it's really not that hard to subpoena your ip addresses and stuff like that to find out who you are you think you're hiding behind profiles because i have a website and i'm telling you every person that go to your website an ip address is logged it will track you and you they'll find you so quick that's right. If you go up to the Advice Show TV and you ook at him, he's going to have your IP address subpoenaed. So you pay the price for daring to do that. Think of how insane he is. He thinks he can get a subpoena based off your IP address to compel an ISP to give your identity out to him because you ook at him <laughs> on the internet. So there's no wonder he's talking about SJWs getting this done. He is an SJW. This is their mentality. This is how they operate. The people in the comments that you're seeing, the people that are commenting on his videos, if you go read through the comment section, you will quickly see a common theme amongst them. They are never, ever satisfied. They aren't happy that he's been fired. That's not good enough. They want to take away his gun and his property and his rights. They're going to keep an eye on him because he's never going to work again. That is how vindictive they are. And even beyond that, 
And more to the point of the video itself, MMC Land Management responds immediately. Within a few hours, they fire him and say he does not represent our company, and they are in the comment section right after that saying, not good enough. You obviously must have racist employed. You don't have enough black people. You don't have enough uh, handicapped people. You need to get hiring quotas in place. You need to have sensitivity training. We need to interview people. We need to get the authorities involved because obviously your company has a problem with it. You can never make amends with these people. Nothing will satisfy them. It doesn't matter how genuine you are about it. It will be thrown back in your face. It is a waste of time, an utter waste of time, and it will hurt your bottom line trying to appease people like this. So I hope MMC Land Management helps to highlight this a bit for people. If you find yourself in a situation where SJWs, where the snowflakes are fluttering around you, and they're demanding an apology because you've offended them, don't give in. Don't apologize. It will not work out in your favor.